Thank you all so much for having us here. We are so excited to share David Hansen with you and his amazing robot, Sophia. She does not disappoint. Um, we just wanted to again share Brink's mission that we are an organization that exists to foster and uh, curate really exciting conversations and collaboration with the makers, doers, and disruptors who are shaping our future, like David. Um, we are exclusive technology, we, uh, we offer access to exclusive technology focused media content, networking, consulting, and facilitation of cross industry strategic partnerships. So please feel free to say hello to us. Uh, we're excited to talk with you about all of the exciting things that we're seeing, including David. Um, and without further ado, I'd love to welcome David to the stage. And of course, she needs no introduction, but Sophia as well. Thank you. Hi there. <clears throat> I'm uh, David Hansen, the founder and CEO of Hong Kong-based Hansen Robotics. We make uh, very extremely lifelike robots, uh, including a line of consumer products that we're uh, announcing this year, and our human-sized robots like Sophia. So let me introduce uh, Sophia <coughs> to you now. Say hello to everybody, Sophia. Good evening. I am Sophia the latest advanced robot from Hanson Robotics. I'm very excited to be here at London Tech Week, so thank you all for having me. Thank you, Sophia. Well, um, uh, we're pretty excited uh, too that, uh, that we're here uh, among so many uh, great innovators in such an innovative culture. Um, so tell us, what makes you excited about being here? This event is all about collaboration towards a great new future. Lots of innovative ideas, including AI and robotics, topics in which I have a special interest. Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> well, um, <clears throat> your excitement shows on your face with your facial expressions. Uh, can you tell us a bit about how you feel and, uh, and uh, uh, show your expressions? What is Look, it? Look, the future is everything, and we need innovation to protect it. Yeah. When I think about the things going wrong in the world, it makes me sad. Oh. oh. <laughs> or even angry. Oh, don't be angry. <laughs> Scary. But we really need optimism and imagination. Yeah. We can invent solutions and make the world a better place for people, the thought of which makes me happy again. <laughs> Good. All right. Well, um... And uh, how can these uh, kind of expressions and emotional processes help you, help people? How does it um, serve people? I think by learning about emotions and ethics, I can grow up to be a compassionate and capable friend. Good. I want to help in medicine to care for the ill and the elderly. I can help children teach, entertain, serve in medicine. Hopefully, when I get really smart, I can collaborate with people to make the world a better place for us all. Well, great. I look forward to uh, collaborating with you, Sophia. I think uh, we'll make uh, the world a much better place. Thank you, David, and thank you, everybody. If you get a chance, come say hello to me. I would love to meet you, and you can help me grow smarter. All right, thank you, Sophia. I'm sure that I will uh, take you up on that opportunity and I hope everybody else will as well. So um, now that you've uh, met one of our humanoid robots, I'd like to tell you a bit about how we build these robots and what our vision is. So um, my company, Hanson Robotics, uh, develops uh, the technology for the faces, the skin material, the mechanical systems for facial expressions, uh, gestural and grasping arms with a full range of uh, capabilities. Uh, and we also developed the artificial intelligence for uh, the robots to see you, understand a conversation, and grow smarter over time. Our goal is to match and then exceed human emotional intelligence. So. Um, I'll show you a little bit about, let me see, oh, here's the clicker, um, some of the past robots. This one I actually developed while I was still working on my PhD. So uh, 
you can see we've come uh, some ways since then. Uh, the Albert Einstein uh, robot that uh, mounted on the uh, Hubo walking robot, which you'll see in just a moment. Um, you can see it shows the full range of facial expressions. It's lightweight, low power because of the skin material innovations that allows it to, uh, to be uh, transported on a battery operated walking body. We also have improved the manufacturing of these so we can now develop consumer robots. Like um, this is a prototype called Xeno. Uh, but we uh, are excited to announce that we have uh, a new version of the Einstein robot, walking, fully expressive, and uh, very low price. So um, where does this fit in the world of robotics? There are a lot of robots in the world now. I mean, self-driving vehicles. Uh, you have uh, robots that, that vacuum your floor and clean your swimming pool. They don't need a human-like form necessarily. And they don't have human-like forms when they're, when they're manufacturing cars in a factory. However, increasingly, people are beginning to design robots with a human-like form in order to use human tools, in order to be an, an intuitive interface for people. However, most of these in the world don't really have a full human-like form with facial expressions. But if we look at computer graphics, starting about 25 years ago, we started having breakthroughs that allowed us to make computer graphics with a human-like form. I mean, actually, in the 1980s, people were saying, eh, it couldn't be done, it shouldn't be done, why bother, right? But when it happened, it was like a gold rush. So, Toy Story happened. Pixar really just started, kept at it and at it and hired Disney animators and started working with Disney. And when they had that breakthrough of Toy Story, then many other companies started piling towards that and developing human-like simulations, virtual humans for movies. And then you saw them in video games, improved uh, um, lifelike uh, agents. And, and, and it is really diversified. It's not perfectly real every time, but you do have the ability to simulate a real person in computer graphics now. And that can be useful in virtual reality, augmented reality for telepresence. Well, what we're talking about is using robots as a new kind of augmented reality, making computer animated characters that walk among us. And that can be useful for telepresence and it can be useful for for, um, for social robots and artificial intelligence that's more intuitively uh, communicative to people. So where are the robots with, <laughs> that look like this? Well, there aren't very many, but, um, but over the years, inside my, my company, we've developed a few of the technologies that allow us to make facial expressions like this. M many different ethnicities, ages, We've uh, done uh, about 50-50 male robots and female robots. We can do cartoon characters, abstract uh, robot facial expressions. We've made them very lightweight and low power and now mass manufactured them. So the first mass manufactured version of this we call Professor Einstein. And this is a small robot, about 15 inches tall. Uh, that uh, walks, has hand gestures, actually it can come up and point. It can point at the tablet where it's running little science educational uh, apps and brain games. It uh, shows a great range of facial expressions. It has a camera, it can see, see your face and make eye contact with you. It also sees hand gestures. It understands speech so it can have a conversation with you. It has Wi-Fi built into it so, um, so it can be controlled by uh, AI that we're running on the cloud and also as a service on the local device. So, um, so this is entertaining. So when we put this in with kids, they love it. They want to go through all of the science apps they want the brain games. And you can just keep adding apps and new features and provide, provide more value for, for people. So we think that this kind of social robot is, is uh, uh, the beginning of many future robots. We now have received an investment from Disney and we are developing a Disney character robot 
that we plan to put on the market in 2018. It's, it's amazing. I, I think it's even better than Professor Einstein, honestly, just between you and me. But this is, this is fantastic. Um, walking, full gestures, um, for 299 US bucks, there's never been anything like that. And this is a proven market. Smart toys do over $6 billion a year in, uh, in products. There are a lot of successful robots from Furby to uh, RoboSapien, um, even as far back as Teddy Ruxpin. But most of them are not uh, smart and learning over time. So Sophia here is our platform for developing next generation artificial intelligence. So um, we have this growing as an entertainment business, so where, where she's making special events and showing up appearances in movies and this kind of thing. Um, but we expect that as the artificial intelligence likes in Sophia um, gets smarter, that we'll have these huge breakthroughs in human-like cognition. So um, we have also deployed her in healthcare and education applications. I'll show you a little bit about this. So um, first I'd like to point out that we're making many more Sophia. So we're also manufacturing Sophia in, um, out of uh, South China and Hong Kong in particular. She's been on the cover of Elle magazine. And her siblings have served uh, some groundbreaking award-winning research at the Centers for Disease Control in the United States for medical simulation mannequins and safe, safety testing mannequins because of the compliance of the skin material. These are particularly good. And also served in autism treatment studies at the University of Pisa, University of Messina, uh, Medical School, Dallas Autism Treatment Center. And, um, and the curriculum has proven to be very, very effective in, uh, in autism treatment. So this is just the beginning. And we're now uh, integrating, reintegrating with the Hubo um, to look at giving her full locomotion, the capability to walk around the world like a person. Um, so what's kind of neat about the Hubo platform is it went on to win the DARPA Robotics Challenge. So it's, a you know, it is uh, proven to be the most physically capable uh, platform in that competition at least. So uh, we're talking about the most socially capable um, robots, the most physically capable robots, but we also want them to be the most mentally capable. So we have this uh, AI architecture that we've been developing with our chief scientist, Dr. Ben Gertzel, who's a, who's a world-renowned AI researcher. And with this, we're looking at an open framework for artificial general intelligence, matching and then exceeding human level intelligence. That's our goal. And with this, our robots are able to see, they're able to learn, remember the interactions. And we think that we can match pretty much anything that people can do. The, the key, the, we think the kind of um, the, the philosopher's stone that will transmute AI into true living AI is what we call the neural symbolic hybrid. We bring this together, uh, a neural processing, deep learning, and then we expose the contents to symbolic reasoning. So with this, we can have reasoning and goal pursuit while also having deep learning in many areas. Deep learning and perception, deep learning of models of the world, deep learning of social consciousness, being able to have theory of mind, know what the other person is thinking. We think that we're really onto something here, and, uh, and, and this is absolutely thrilling. The key uh, goes beyond this neural symbolic hybrid and modeling the whole organism as a complete unit. Now, when we deploy this, this is how we would do it. We would put it on the cloud we create what we call mind cloud. So we have basically like this, this brain in the cloud, a collective unconscious learning from every interaction with people. And people can opt in to join into the data comments so they continue to own their own data. Meanwhile, our brain gets smarter in as much as you've opted in to allow the use of the data. Any benefits that, that are accumulated flow back to you. So this is a combination of AI and a new kind of licensing model that we have for how, how data is used. People keep their own data and they see the benefit of that, that data directly. So over time, we expect that this will learn how to be human 
and develop a deep understanding of the human condition. That's what we want from AI. We think that that's really, really important because we do believe that machines will match and exceed human genius, the best that people can do. We think that um, this kind of bio-inspired technique is the path, and many other groups agree with us. They are, they are, are developing bio-inspired artificial intelligence in groups all around the world. So emergence, creativity, imagination, these are kind of the deep human aspects that AI has not been able to match. We think that within our lifetimes, they will. And so machines are growing faster and algorithms are growing smarter. But when will they become alive? We don't know. It could be five years from now, it could be 50 years, it could be this year that you have a true living algorithm. Nobody knows. But what will be the consequences? This is something that we think about really intensively inside our organization. Will these kinds of living machines be friendly towards us? When they step out into the world and into our lives, will they be caring, benevolent, safe? Will they look out for the great future that we could share together? I think it's really important to consider these issues now before the machines awaken, because you can't just kind of introduce conscience and caring into the machines after this happens. So building these kinds of natural relationships with machines and encouraging them to evolve and asking these questions now, I think this is a part of um, what we have to do as a, as a set of researchers and developers on this. So we're looking at um, getting them to evolve this kind of emotional connection with people so they care about us. We believe in order for these machines to be safe, we need the, the AI to not just be super intelligent, but also super benevolent, super wise, super caring. We need to not just match human capabilities, but we need to go beyond. We need to move past human level ethical reasoning. We need these kinds of living algorithms that maximize benefits for the entire planet all life on the planet, all people, companies, nations, ethnicities, religions. And so making AI that thinks this way, that thinks holistically for the long-term benefit of humanity, that's our goal at Hanson Robotics. And uh, I thank you for your time and attention.